All right, here's where the 4% withdrawal rate fails. Uh, I'm reading my most recent Financial Advisor magazine, and we can see it's an article by Christopher Robbins, or, uh, yeah, Chris Robbins. Uh, a new study says the rate can falter if lifespans, inflation, and market volatility aren't just right. But I, just, but I, that doesn't bother me, whatever. Um, but what, what I want to share with you what's interesting on this. This is what I, I tell you, man, this is nuts. Actually, let's see who Chris Robbins, this is, uh, you can, I'll put a link in the show notes. Is this Tony Robbins' his son? I don't know. Let's take him out here. Uh, who is uh, Chris? He doesn't say his bio on here. All right. Why male advisors can't close a gender financial literacy gap alone? Is there a gender financial literacy gap? I don't think so. I think women are actually prone to be better investors than men. How dare you, Josh? How dare you say that? I think there's some truth to that. Actually, I've uh, when I took uh, Charlotte and Maddie, did I take Maddie to the rifle range or the uh, handgun range? Uh, the instructor said women are better at learning about. Uh, firearms and men because women actually listen. I think there's some validity to that for sure. All right. Anyway, so uh, I, I'm not going to read this whole article because this isn't the point of what I'm trying to accomplish here. But a 4% retirement asset withdrawal rate remains a standard for financial planning, but doesn't hold up against any scenario. No one ever would have saw that. Uh, but I want to show you that the paper, which is a new paper by the Alliance for Lifetime Income. Hmm. Alliance for Lifetime Income. An insurance and industry trade group is called Planning for Retirement Income with an Increasingly Volatile and Uncertain World. The volatility is not increasing. There's that's there's absolutely no, that's just that's silly, 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 silly. But when you hear something for the Alliance for Lifetime Income, so who is the Alliance for Lifetime Income? An insurance and industry trade group. Hold on just a second. They're a purveyor of uh, income annuities and annuities generally, tackling America's retirement income crisis with protected lifetime income. Our purpose help Americans address the risk of outliving their retirement income so they can enjoy their retirement. Yes, indeed. Uh, so who are the sponsors of this? Uh, let's see if we can see media. Uh, a new institute to tackle America's uh, retirement income crisis about our member companies. Uh, protectedincome.org uh, is a 501c6 education organization based in... Washington, D.C. Interesting. Why are they in Washington, D.C.? Because that's where the lobbyists uh, live, so they can lobby Congress to get their laws passed so they can have access to your money. Uh, let's see. We believe annuities, one of only three sources of protected lifetime income, can be an important part of the solution for retirement security. I, look, I don't have any qualm with that, but here are their members' solution. Uh, Equitable, Allianz, AIG, uh, let's see, Jackson, Protective, Transamerica, just a big, I mean, this is just so they can sell you more nudies. That's all there is to it. All right. So anyway, look, I don't even have a qualm with that. It's just, I always find it funny that uh, uh, their focus in Washington, D.C. as a way to sell you annuities and to get into access to your 401k. All right. So what they're going to, so is there an incentive for these guys to say, oh my goodness, the 4% rate falls here, 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 here. Thus, you needed a guaranteed income annuity. Of course there is. Um the results provided by research and models present substantial case for con cause for concern, particularly within a world where increasing volatility has arguably become the norm. It's, that's just silly. Uh, in conducting their own research on a safe withdrawal rate, they found that the 4% rule under nor normal conditions still holds strong and imposes only a 16% risk that retirees will run out assets within the first 20 years of retirement. The 16% failure was an average of three different portfolio assumptions, equity to bond allocations of 60, 40, 70, 30, and 80, 20. Okay, the inflation rate is assumed at 2%. Notice how they're not talking about their expenditures. Their expenditures are, of course, going up with inflation because that's how they get to scare you. So, oh my goodness, you're going to spend so much money, you're going to run out. Oh, we have an option to protect you against that. Then they looked at a 6% rate, approximating the payout factor of a single premium immediate annuity. Retirees using 6% portfolio withdrawals ran a 60% chance of running out of income within the first 20 years. Get the single, single premium immediate annuity to speed it. I got no calm with that, but the idea, uh, we're going to use a 6% portfolio withdrawal and compare it to a, a SPIA. Huh. Uh, SPIAs are not adjusted for inflation, just to keep that in mind. Well, I guess you could make them so, but uh, you would not 
uh, that would not make sense. Um, I'm just telling you right now, the rates that you get on the front end of a SPIA that has income adjustments for inflation are just so low, it's not worth it. Uh, it's not enough to look at a person's average life expectancy since half the population could be expected to exceed it. All right, uh, particularly as a standard deviation for longevity is about 10 years. All right, so they even go to 35 and 40 years. But I want to, that, again, that's all good. I, like, I don't have any qualm with that, whatever. Um, it's just an, another issue of 4% rule failing or not failing, all this stuff. At the end of the day, people say, oh, my goodness. The issue is your spending. That drives this, not your re rule for uh, retirement income. All right. Uh, these, a lot of budget stuff. That's fine. However, as client, uh, they, they've noticed that four key factors affect the effectiveness of the 4% withdrawal rate and other statistical withdrawal rates. Longevity, your health, market volatility, and inflation. Market volatility? I think a market performance would, but again, if they're using historical norms, we've already got those historical norms locked in. The issue is what happens in the future. All right, advisors are now using retirement planning assumptions that place retirees around 100 years old. I don't. As clients live longer, it's more likely advisors will encounter, the, encounter those with some level of physical and cognitive impairment that affects them for the rest of their life. Market declines during the global financial crisis in December 2018, in the outset of COVID, uh, serve as reminders that financial markets remain volatile. That doesn't mean there's more volatility. There's not. All right, so the authors recommended a strategy. This is the whole point. They recommend a variety of planning strategies. You can adopt a more conservative withdrawal rate. Spend less money to make sure you don't run out. Work longer. Save more and use income annuities. I always love it. So don't have a 4%. Have a 3%. Or you could work longer. Or you could save more. Or you could use income annuities. I just find that. Work longer, save more. Work longer, save more. And give us more money for income annuities. Be nice if someone actually said, instead of looking at the withdrawal rate, let's look at the expenditures needed and how's that mesh out in terms of reality on the ground. All right, we'll see you guys. Love to hear your comments.